In today's lesson, I'm going to be covering expression controls. Expression controls aren't perhaps a very well known or used feature of lot animations, but they can be really powerful and save you a lot of time dynamically changing your lot animation once it's in a website. What we're going to do is rig up some settings of our animations like the stroke width and color of our little worm filler. We're going to rig it up to some expression controls and then I'm going to show you in JavaScript how to change these values so that we can very easily change things like its color and stroke width. Let's get started. So we're going to start off in After Effects. Here I've got my little animation of a worm. There we go. And so here we just have some layers for the eyes and then the most important parts, the body and this other part of the body of the little worm. So what we're going to do now is create a null object and I'm just going to call that controls and then put it up top out of the way. And what we need is the effects controls. And then we're going to add a expression controls and we're going to do a slider for the stroke width and then two more. Uh, let's do color control and one more color control. Okay, so I'm just going to rename this. Uh, let's do a stroke and then body color and then lip color. And what I need to do now is grab the body color and quickly just add it as the default in the controls and then grab this, grab its fill. There we go. Do that and then set the stroke to 20 because I like 20, 20 stroke width. And now what we're going to do is rig up the different parts to this control. So here, I'm going to start with the stroke width. Uh, so we go under the stroke and there's the stroke width. So let's just do that. And then the same for the body, stroke width, there we go. Okay, so now what we want is this to change together, so that's fine. And then the color. So that goes for the lip color. And then the worm body as well. So now if we change the color in here, it will change the worm's color. Right. So that will make it easier to change in the code. And that's our little worm. So what I'm going to do now is export it with body moving and then we can get into the JavaScript. So this is the little demo project I've set up. And what I want to demonstrate is how you can access the values we just hooked up to the expression controls, access them in JavaScript, and then show you how you can easily change these values and how that works with lot animations. So I've hooked up the stroke width to a slider. And as you can see, that's quickly changing the stroke width of the worm. And then I can access individual elements and just play around with them, set whatever could I want. And it's a very easy way with expression controls to manipulate your lot animation. So <clears throat> the project looks like a lot of code. Uh, it will be in the description in the School of Lottie GitHub. Um, but basically, it's just a slider that calls a JavaScript function, which I'll show you in a minute, and then the text inputs for the hex colors. Um, but first of all, first of all, I want to get into the the sorry the JSON file that we exported, and I pretty printed it out so I can explain what's going on. So 
In After Effects, we rigged up our stroke and two colors to the expression controls. And if we look in the JSON that's been exported by Body Moving, you can see our first layer is called controls. So that will give you a hint to what it's going to do. If you scroll down a bit more, we get to this part, EF, which contains a slider control with the name stroke, as we named it in After Effects. And here you can see the value 20, which is what I put by default for the slider. And then just underneath that, we have body color and this value, which is RGB and then the alpha value. And then we have lip color and the same again. So that might give you a hint to what we're going to do. So if we didn't use these controls, you would have your different layers like this. So here we have the eyes and then da, da, da. so a lot of JSON to go through, uh, which isn't very easy. So there's eyes again. Uh, we got some stroke here. We got feel like there's a lot of information to get through uh, if you wanted to change these values. As you can see here, there's the color. Um, so using expression control simplifies that. You know, it's at the top. You can easily access it and change the values. So if we head over into some of the JavaScript code, uh, as well, this is um, might look kind of complicated, but a lot of it is sort of boilerplate code, uh, loading the animation, reloading it. Um, but I'll explain it quickly. So using Lottie Web, as you usually do, you just have a container, um, and yeah, load it up with the path. So that's what I did. I created a quick function called reload animation because every time we change the values, we need to reload the animation. So we're actually going to destroy the old one and then load it back up with the new information we modified. And then I just added a quick little event listener to know when the data is ready. And so every time I'll start off with the slider, every time the slider is changed, so on change, we're going to change the stroke width. So I pass the stroke width and then we use this global animation data and we call change stroke width slider. So here it takes the animation data and the stroke width we want to use. So if we've loaded up the animation, what we're going to do is change the animation data and we're going to pass the int and set it to the value we passed it. So why use animation data dot layers zero index zero dot ef index zero dot ef index zero dot v dot k. What is this? If we go back into the uh, animation data of our worm, we can see here that I'm going into animation data and then layers. So layers is an array and we're looking for the stroke width controller. So this is the f this is actually um, index zero. So the controls is at the start, and that's why I did layers, and then zero. So we're inside here. Maybe that will help it. So we're inside this part, and then we're going to go down to EF. Ah, EF is here. Index zero. So the EF is an array as well. So EF is the array of our different controls basically and we want the first one because the first one is the stroke so EF0 and then once again we got another EF which is a, an array as well and we want the first element so 0 so that's our EF0 and then V V and K K so here we can see it's 20 but I'm going to grab the value from the slider. 
So here you can see I set it by default to 20, but then when it changes, we're going to pass it. It's going to go through the different functions, the animation data, and then pass it and set our animation data and reload the animation. So every time we change the stroke width, the animation is actually getting reloaded. And that is how we can do the stroke width. And it's the same principle with the colors, except that we enter hexadecimal colors because, well, they're easier than RGB. Uh, so the little bit of difficulty here is that we actually need to convert these values into RGB before using them. So I'm going to show that now. So what we have here is our two different text inputs. And I've just set some default values. And on change, we call cool stroke, cool change stroke color. And I'm going to pass it 0 and 1 so that I know uh, if I want to change the body, I'm going to use 0. And if I want to change the little lip color, we use uh, 1. So it's just to identify uh, which color we're going to be using. So here we go. We grab the hex color and the layer we want to change. We convert the hex to RGB and then we do change stroke color. So you'll find the code um, in the description, uh, but this is just a basic function to change hex to RGB. So nothing too special going on here. Uh, you can just copy and paste that and that'll be fine. The main thing I wanted to get into was once again changing the stroke color. So depending on the layer, we're either going to change the body or the lip. So once again, we take the animation data, we take the stroke color as RGB, and then the layer. So if the animation data is ready and not null, if the layer is zero, we're going to change one part of the animation. And if it's one, we're going to change another part. So once again, if we go into the JSON, what I did was just look through the different values. And as the layer we want, as the FX, sorry, we want to change, uh, is sort of in the same place as the stroke width, um, it was pretty easy. So once again, we're going to go down from layers and then index zero index zero. So we're in here. Then we're going to go into the effects. So EF. And we put zero because we wanted the stroke. Now we want uh, the first element because this is our body. So we're going to do EF1. Now we're in EF1. And then you can see another EF for effects. And this is index zero. So we're going to go in zero and then V and then K and set it to our RGB color. And it's the same story for the lip color. Uh, we've just got to change to EF index two. So we hop in here, EF, V and K. And then reload the animation. So that may seem complicated, but that's the easier way to change uh, values of a lot of animation. And as you can see, we can, for example, the stroke width, we can group up multiple elements and multiple layers, more importantly, of our animation and put it to one controller and we can modify two different layers at the same time. So that saves a lot of time as we only have to change the value of the stroke width slider and not each individual layer. And the same goes for colors. If you wanted the same colors um, for both of the layers, you could just use one color control and modify that single color controller and it will modify for the whole 
animation, all the different layers. Um, the code will be in the description, as I said. So take your time to go through it if you want to, and be sure to ask any questions you have on the code in the YouTube comments, and I will get back to you. All right, I hope I explained that fairly decently. Um, it was a bit more technical than the previous videos, but I hope it helps you out and learn something about Lottie. If this video helps you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel to keep up to date with everything happening in the wonderful world of Lottie Animations.